Good morning, everybody. Good morning. So glad to see you back in COGS at 11. How was your week? I hope that uh, you are doing well, especially now under this COVID-19. Everybody needs to be very careful. And so maybe I, before I start, uh, let me uh, quickly remind us, uh, all of you, because of the latest uh, C, uh, COVID-19, that the whole circumstances is not very good. And so we have to make sure that the church will practice very strict SOP. And so make sure every time you come in for services or other meeting, that make sure you actually check in, check the temperature, and then wear masks. And try not to uh, group together too often. If you need to speak, maintain some distance away. And uh, if you find that uh, at the counter there, those who are responsible, check your temperature. When you have reached 37 and above, Please understand that uh, when you are at that temperature, you are not allowed to join the service. So you might be gently or, or politely ask you not to come in. I hope you understand. But this is the practice the, uh, SOP so that uh, we will help to flatten the curve. Okay. So continue to pray that uh, the Lord will, will help and then make the good policies and uh, procedures. And everybody are here to this uh, SOP. I hope that we pay back to one figure, even zero, and uh, then we can do things more normally. Okay, so I uh, appreciate the, the cooperation and understanding. And so, with that, may I invite you to stand and uh, get ourselves ready for today's Holy Communion service. We will begin with this collect for purity. It's a very good prayer to pray as we come, the Lord will uh, purify us so that we can just focus uh, on the Lord as we come to observe. The Holy Communion. And so, right after this prayer, Vietnam and uh, uh, Sheena, the husband and wife team, uh, will lead us to sing unto the Lord. So let us pray now. Almighty God, pray with me together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name to cry as our Lord. Amen. Amen. We are now singing to the Lord. Amen. Good morning. Shalom. Shalom. Are you ready to uh, worship the Lord this morning? Amen. Because He is our God and our salvation. Amen. Let 
thank you for being our Savior. For when we had no hope, you came into this world to give us hope. For when we were condemned, Lord, you came and saved us. You. Only you, O oh Lord, as you have said, it's only through you that salvation can come. Lord, at this time we want to remember all the people who are affected by COVID-19 law. That's like the whole world. The world that you have created alone. And the people that you have created to populate the world. Lord, though not all of them are looking to you for a solution, they're looking to the scientists to find a cure, to find a vaccine. COVID-19. Lord, we, your people, trust in you, O oh Lord. We trust in you alone. Oh Lord, you are the one, the only one who can solve this problem. This pandemic have caught, it have crossed the world. Get on their knees because, Lord, this invisible any virus can bring the whole to a standstill. Lord, now we see how little, how little power we have against it. But it's only through you, Lord, we look to you, Lord, to help us get through this. Help us to appreciate, Lord, your creation. And we ask that, Lord, that you forgive us. For we see how slowly mankind is destroying the earth by our, our activities, by polluting the world, causing so much carbon being released into the air and changing the climate, melting the solar, the, the poles, the ice in, this, in the ice caps, totally changing the climate and causing so much disaster upon ourselves. Oh Lord, we pray that even as COVID-19 has changed the world, this new normal, we pray, Lord, to help us realize every man on earth, help us realize, the Lord, how we should take good care of this earth that you have created for our benefit. Help us to recreate the Garden of Eden, Lord, the way that you meant the world to be and not what it is today. Oh Lord, help us to be wise in you, O oh Lord. Help us not to be greedy, O oh Lord, for economic gain. And help us to forget what the earth is supposed to be and how the earth can heal itself if we leave it alone and not disturb it. Lord, we want to pray for a reduction of the cases in Malaysia, Lord. As Singapore's numbers are getting down, Malaysia's numbers are getting up. Oh Lord, we pray that you help the authorities to see what is wrong. Lord. Help the people not to be lax in their adherence to the SOP. Help us all, every one of us, to be diligent and vigilant of following the rules so that we stop this infection once and for all. Father, we pray for those who have lost loved ones because of COVID-19. Lord, we pray for your comfort and love. The Lord will help them have peace. 
Father, we pray also for the youth and the children that's having exams this uh, period. Lord, we pray for them to remember all that they have been taught, all the tuition, all the facts that they have learned from their tutors, from the teachers. Help them have instant recall. That when they sit in the exam hall, they will not panic. The Lord, they will remember. Give them the peace to remember and be able to answer correctly. Father, we also want to pray for Dickness Honey. We want to thank you, O Lord, that she is able to take a rest, to relieve the pain that is coming from her sleep is. Lord, you know the great pain that she has to go through. I will pray, Lord, that you relieve the pain from her. Even as you contemplate, as she lies down and rests, to relieve the pain, Lord, that you will help contemplate on your goodness. Lord, we want to thank you for the successful operation in Revan building. We thank you, Lord, for his fast recovery and his safe journey back home in JV from KL. Lord, we want to thank you that you have been so good. And Lord, that the servant of God, of yours, that you have taken care of. Lord, we pray for a speedy recovery that he may continue to serve you faithfully and for many, many years to come. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. As you see, let's continue to join me and pray for Mr. Ong Eng Kim, who probably is still in the middle of a surgery. Let's pray for him. Father, we want to commit to you our brother Ong Kim, who probably going through this operation in this KBK uh, Special Hospital. Father, we are hand be upon those surgeons and the team <coughs> as they perform the surgery over the prostrate brain. Pray God that through this surgery you will bring healing back to our body in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray there's no complication, a smooth operation, and a successful one. And then be a quick recovery. And pray in the midst of this, that you will experience your exceptional presence and peace. So Lord, we thank you that you hear our prayer. Because you are a faithful God. That any storm in life will not be able to destroy us. Because you are a rock. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We now proceed with our service. We will now read the scripture from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 4 to 8. And uh, Rachel, you flip for me, okay, as we proceed with the reading. Let's join me and we read seated. One to go. As you come to him, a living stone rejected by man. But in the sight of God, chosen and precious, you yourself, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stay in Scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a corner stone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in me will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. And this is the word of the Lord. Amen. So those who just came in or those who came later, once again, uh, let me welcome you back to our COGS Sunday 
at 11, and also those who just maybe come by at, at the uh, excuse uh, online. Very glad that you are part of our service today. Now, last Sunday, I suggested two responses we, that uh, we should adopt. Two responses we should adopt when we are in the midst of any storms. Can you still remember the responses? All right, I hope you have some discussion uh, last Friday. Okay, so uh, let's do a very quick one. All right, the first one is keep coming back to Jesus, keep coming back to Jesus, keep coming back to Jesus, because He is our foundation. Today we sang, we praise God, we, up, we, we exalt Him, because He's the rock of our salvation. And then upon this rock, we have to believe what God thinks of us, because our relationship with Jesus, we have to think of ourselves and believe that what God thinks of us. Do you remember what God thinks about you? Tell, tell the people beside you. Tell him or her. The how God think of him. Alright? Even if your spouse is around, affirm him or her. You are precious. Sometimes I might be angry with you, but you are precious. <laughs> you are still wonderful and uh, 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 perfect uh, in the eyes of God because of Jesus Christ. Alright, so yeah, this is the two responses we, we, we say last week. They probably will, will give you the extra strength to move on. Now today, I want to give you one more. Add upon these three, two lists. I want to add one more. That is, live on what God does in your life. As you face difficulties in life, challenges in life, live on what God is doing in life instead of looking at the storm, instead of uh, 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 dwelling yourself and uh, lost in the midst of the storm. But you have to look at what God is doing in the midst of the storm in your life. And as we live on that, that will become another strength to move on. Because that situation is not the end. That situation is perhaps is a path that leads me on into the perfect working of God in my life. And so we observe again, therefore, in this verse 5, it says that you yourself like living stones and being built into a spiritual house. They're talking about all the believers in Christ. So we got collected all these scattered ones again, 30 stones, we collect them and then put onto this rock, Jesus Christ, and begin to do something, building something onto a very powerful construction uh, uh, a project for building us into a spiritual house, a holy priest. And so this is what Peter told the Christian then in the different part places in uh, Asia Minor who were suffering persecution. Uh, they were being insulted, they are dri driven away, oppressed, arrested for their beliefs, or even to the point of being killed. But then he told them that as as uh, as they are, they, as they happen, actually God is building them into a spiritual house, into some, a holy priesthood. Now, of course, the, the builder here is not the, 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 the one who caused the persecution, all right? It's not the persecutor who are doing the building. In fact, they are doing the destructive, uh, uh, if there's such a term, destructive construction. So they, are, they are tearing their life down. But then, this persecutor, as I mentioned, now to harass them, hurt them, intimate them, uh, intimate, uh, 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 intimate take them, or to prevent them from their leaving their faith out, or even want them to get out from their, the, 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 what you call, from where they are living in the midst of these so, uh, so called uh, 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 non believers. So, as Peter is saying that, that in the midst of their God is building something, so Peter is declaring something very powerful. Behind those evil purposes and actions being inflicted on these God's believers or God's people during uh, Peter's time, Peter points out that there is an unseen builder with righteous intention was doing something good and powerful in the life of those who are suffering. Amen or not? Amen. In the midst of all this evil intent, God has a righteous intention to build them up in the midst of suffering. They were being built, as he has said, into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood. They ought to graduate, keep drawing themselves to the living stone, Jesus Christ, the strong, strong foundation, the precious cornerstone. As God, the 
master builder draw all the believers like living stones all right, to form a spiritual temple. Peter was also inclined as they come together and they scattered the 30 stones as they gathered them and built into a holy uh, a, a, a group of people. They call it the priesthood all right, or, or the spiritual out. So Peter is saying that like this uh, a living stone should not live apart from others or from Christ. So this is a very important reminder. As you go through difficult times, do not isolate yourself. Do not get yourself out from the fellowship. Do not get yourself to be departed from Christ, not only from Christ, but the people of Christ. Do not get yourself away because a single stone cannot stand long under this uh, 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 tremendous uh, beating at the, uh, of, of this uh, life of storm. So Peter was encouraging, in a way, the Christian there to live on and do what God had directed them to do as they faced uh, challenges. So that's where I mean to live on what God is doing in your life instead of, you know, draw back from those situations. Then we will miss the opportunity to allow God to build us and shape us into and feed us into this spiritual structure He called the uh, uh, spiritual health. Even through negative circumstances or whatever harmful treatment they suffer from, God is the builder, not the persecutioner, nor the situation. Do not let circumstances or persecutor who treat you badly define the way you are being built. You hear me? Do not let this terrible situation make you a bitter person. But let this situation through the work of God make you a better person. So this is, I think, what God is building to make us a better person out of a bitter situation. So God is the builder. And we need to sometimes, as we say, accept the fact that uh, uh, God is allowing that to, to, to come into our life. Christian today, as you know, enduring all kinds of facing various difficulty, even in other areas in now modern time, not thankfully, not in our country now, we are, do not have direct persecution, maybe oppression in a way, suppresses from certain expression of our faith, but then we do not have this direct persecution. But then if you look further away in, the, in, in Africa, in, uh, uh, in Middle East, there are thousands of reported that are being killed, sometimes in the mass. Because of the faith. Right? So we also could suffer difficulties in our relationship, not only because of our faith, but in our relationship, not only with neighbors, sometimes we have nasty neighbors. How many are nasty neighbors to put our hand? Sometimes <laughs> 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 right? we even be in our family, then even be in the church, you have difficult people to work with. And then sometimes we are, because especially now, uh, COVID 19 kind of enhance some of these. Uh, financial situation, difficulty, sicknesses, and, 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 and you know, and so we, we could uh, also wrestle difficulty in our job because now we, are, we pray thankfully that we pray for those who perhaps because of COVID 19 lost the job and need to find a new job. And in all this process, in a way, we might not directly physically experience that persecution, but we are going through tough time. We have our own share of the roughness and the fallenness effect of uh, humankind and our world. And we could suffer even because sometimes it's not because you are okay, but then you see people around you suffering. So so a good, good heart. You suffer what you see. You suffer and looking at people in pain. Some of you actually have that kind of heart. Then you see that you yourself begin to feel the hurt in the, the pain uh, in, in, in your heart. And sometimes you reaching out to people, trying to help them to come to the faith, but they are so stubborn, stuck in their own bad habit, and then maybe some deep, uh, 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 what you call, crazy doctrine, and, and it hurts you. And so we are all subject to this kind of different ways of suffering. It might not be just, you know, uh, uh, like so straightforward here that, that because of faith you, you, you will be made hard for you to live. But then, what Peter here is saying, remember, we are not at the mercy of situation. Do not let the situation to victimize you. You can rise above the circumstances because we are the living stone in the process of being built and shaped and fit into a major and massive 
you got your eternal project that ultimately will take over the world. Amen or not? Amen. Do you believe in God? Yes. <laughs> All right, this is what Peter is telling us. God is the master builder. He's not only create the world, the physical world, he also of the event. The things that go around us, never, none of them will slip through his finger. He all begins in watchful eye. And you know, this is again, maybe we need Dr. Lee to come explain to us the sovereignty and this kind of thing. That God is actually doing all this part. It's not like we don't understand. To create or to fulfill his ultimate project. To raise the people of power. That the, 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 that what you call the church. Ultimately, Jesus will come back for the church. Right? And then rule the world together with his people, the Israelites. <clears throat> and so we are to live on those difficulties that are uh, intended. Sometimes God maybe use that <coughs> to not just uh, uh, to draw us closer to Jesus, the song foundation. And one of the uh, faith very well known. Uh, American uh, pastor, he used that. Sometimes uh, God, uh, uh, sometimes God whispered to us. Sometimes God gently asked us to come back, come back. But then we ignore him. And so God had no choice. So he shout. How he shout? By using difficult situation into our life. And so they kind of shout people, like, now we have to come back. And so sometimes this is what God is doing, using that to come to us so that we continue to attach to the living stone. And so also, as you come into the living stone, as God feeds us into the whole spiritual structures, the, the church, that's where we also get support and encouragement from the rest of those who are also being built into the spiritual house. And so, my friend, what are you going through lately? Are you struggling with certain difficulties, challenges in your life? maybe some other way that when, when you feel this kind of, of, of a challenge and difficulties what is your responses? Are you tempted to retaliate? Tempted to, as the Chinese say, you do it on the first day, I do it on the 15th day. And, and then you come kind of that kind of thing. So when trials are so big, you know, when rushing to every side of us, are we tempted to blame others? Are we tempted to isolate ourselves or some like those who without hope choose to end their lives? And now depression is one of the one of the epidemic in a way. You see a lot of this sometimes when my wife comes back and says, Wow, this so, so many people are experiencing this kind of thing. And people need hope because the world is tough. But remember what? Our God is. Good. All right, our God is good. Even life is tough because He is actually building, building us. The 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 the, the truth is, they can even use those things supposed to destroy us. Use them, to build us. Can you think of this wisdom of God? So when we are in pain, it's easy to give up our life, and and and, and uh, or not just give up. I uh, know. Give up our work, give up our ministry, give up our fellowship, give up our 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 relating with people, give up reading the God's word. I'm talking about our, our, me as Christian. We give up prayer time. No, we give up doing the things of God. But then today, Peter reminds us that is the unseen builder behind your painful situation. And so we don't have to give up all this what is good for us to continue to do. It's meant for our general health. And God designed us as a Christian, where we continue fellowship, where we uh, uh, continue to build our relationship with God, continue to pray, continue to read the Bible, continue to seek His faith. God is building us in the, in, even in the midst of difficulty. And these builders know the pain you could bear. It is hammering over our lives. Of this, uh, of the, this, uh, the, 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 what you call the circumstances, God know. So in other, in, in another part of the Bible, say God will not tempt us to the fact that we cannot stand. 
I so if we think that and think wider, that this God will not allow those suffering to the point that we cannot uh, 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 stand or will destroy us. But the thing is, we need to cling on to the foundation. And then God will do His work. So He knows what He's doing, and He knows how much He can allow that to come to us, and He loves you so much that he wants to fit, to, to fit into, he wants you to fit into the glorious spiritual temple he's building. And sometimes it's necessary for us to go to this tough time. And so never leave on the difficulties or suffering that we might need to go through. Let's continue to do what we are able to do. Right? In the midst of that, God said that we still continue to do. Alright? So, uh, some say if you can breathe, keep breathing. Don't stop breathing. You can see, keep seeing. Right? Don't give up. There's it, 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 the other way to, to say, don't give up. If you can read the word to hear, continue the word of God. Continue to pray. If you can still do something for God, do it. Do not let this tough time to turn you into a bitter person. Continue to keep on doing what God actually we as a Christian is supposed to do. Do not blame, do not complain, do not grumble, do not retaliate, do not retreat and surrender to circumstances. Because God says we are more than conqueror. We can overcome as long as we bring our life to the foundation where it's actually living, where it can lie, got a power to come to us. And that's why he said here, he actually asks us what to do during this time. As God, what God is doing, what God is building that we need to live on in the midst of difficulty. He said God is building a priesthood. What is priesthood for? Is offering spiritual sacrifices. And, and Peter here he have, have uh, actually quite foreign to uh, what, we are, what we understand now as priesthood in, 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 uh, in, uh, in some of these uh, uh, like agriculture. So priests, we talk about who? When you talk about priests, you think of who? Do you think of me? <laughs> you know, I'm a priest in the Anglican term. I'm ordained as a yes. ordained person, alright? They call it the, uh, 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 what do you call that? Uh, young or ordained, alright? And so they call it priest. But then here he's not talking about these people like me coming full time with priest. It's actually the priests of all believers. All of you are actually built into that position or that role. What is this priest's primary role? Hello, what is this primary role? Maybe we need to study our uh, Old Testament again, the Leviticus or something. What is priesthood all about? He's a man who stands between God and man. Jesus is a high priest, alright? He has built high priest and now got access to God. But then we also, now we as a Christian, as a little priest of all, that we actually not stand between God and man. So God is building us and continue to want us to, to fulfill that function even in the midst of difficulties. Alright? So what is a priest basically that he is to minister to God as a priest. Like priests, they go in and, and offer sacrifices, burn all these different sac uh, uh, incense, alright? They minister to God. They bring what that will please God. Sacrifices. Then at the same time, they, they, they will stand on behalf of the people and bring their need and maybe essentially ask for forgiveness from God. So they stand in the they minister to the people as well. So now as a modern priest, and all of us are priests, we have had this 12 job. We are continuing to minister to God by bringing praises, continue to serve Him, continue to, to, to leave His name out, to make Him known. And so let me read you a scripture that probably will help us to understand. Hebrew chapter, uh, Hebrew chapter 13, verse 15. Hebrew is a good, good, good book to study as you look at Jesus, and how Jesus has fulfilled all this, He's the best, He's the best. He's the better, he's the better, right? So he has said, to him, that is, uh, to Jesus, okay? Let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. Alright, that is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. I mean, in the middle of the difficulty, one of our chief job to do, continue to live on what God is doing. First of all, express in praise, appreciation, and thanks to God. Not blame. And then he go on to say, this is to minister to God. Then after that he go on to say, uh, do not neglect to do good and to share what you have for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. And so we are now as a new, 
new group of trees, we are not to sacrifice animals. Our sacrifice is totally different. So now first we offer thanks and appreciation and acknowledgement to God. We listen to Him. And then, now we are to serve others by doing good and give them here say what they need. And so it's ministering to those in the need. In other words, that even in the context of what we are talking about, when we are facing challenges in our faith, challenges in our life, do not neglect others' need. Do not just zoom in and just think of ourselves. Think of others as well. So this is what God is doing. As we do that, God will are building a powerful structures called the church. Where the church now stands between the world and this God. So that we can bring the world as we go through difficulties, as people see us, how we handle great uh, difficulties, how we feel so secure and so, so powerful even in the midst of destructive forces, people will tend to be attracted. And then we become the trees to bring them to the presence. So God can use that adverse situation to fulfill His building by gathering more of this dirty stone into that huge structure and be part of the church. Aren't you excited about this? God can use your weaknesses. God can use our downtime to fulfill His greater purpose. This is what Peter is encouraging. Focus on what God is doing, is building a structure. And some of this process and material God is using is the nail of pain. Sometimes God allows the nail of pain. As like this physical, you need the nail to nail all everything into pieces. God sometimes uses the circumstances, the pain, the hurt in life as his tools, as his nail to lead us, to build us into the spiritual structure. And so brothers and sisters, we ought to be grateful. Though we may not know all the answers why we suffer, because through God's word, we understand that no matter what kind of pain or humiliation we endure, God will take care of us. Amen? Amen. God will take care. Why? Because as we studied last week, because they believe that we are precious in His sight. We are precious in His sight. So He will take care of us. Sometimes I see that He forsakes us. Just like Jesus said, Lord, why you forsake me? Sometimes we need to go to certain extent before He comes to rescue. Because that will make us stronger. Thus, not only we can really relax, so we can learn to relax in tough time. Learn to relax in tough time, but we continue to live on fighting, doing God eating that God expects us to do in spite of the pain. For we know that the master builder, Jesus Christ, who is our, uh, uh, our, other, uh, our loving father, who is a master builder of building on top of this uh, cornerstone, who is using those trying situations in order for us to draw closer to the precious stone, Jesus Christ, and to become a part of His body, the body of believers. He builds us as His spiritual home. So remember, you are on the way of being uh, 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 what you call built into the perfect book and sheet, as Ephesians is telling us. So I hope you take courage. God can turn your tough situation into a building opportunity. But we need to allow God to do so. So don't play, don't complain, don't continue to leave what you need to do. And God will make us a better person. Now, I believe you will agree most of the things I said. Right? But then, the problem is, we might understand, we might know, okay, but the thing is, sometimes to leave that out, to leave what we believe, our conviction is tough. I know God is building me, but sometimes in the middle of those tough times, I tend to give up. And so, I want to encourage you to do two things. Continue to make sure you constantly go back to God and link yourself to a group that in that time, that can provide the support for you. We need that support. 
so that you cannot simply just do this. Yeah, well, your husband, your wife, and your children can be a support. Sometimes you need a third party. You need something, someone else to provide a certain support to you. So may I think this opportunity as we are being built into this spiritual home. One of the ways to allow this to happen, of course, we're talking about this situation now, but the other way is to get yourself into a group. And through the group, as we relate to one another, as we sometimes you know, as we learn to you learn to how to relate to people, that you know we are shared. But finally, one most important thing is that every morning come to seek the face of God and ask every morning the renewal of the empowering of the Holy Spirit in your life. Allow the Holy Spirit to fill you. We are not talking about being. Uh, a charismatic, you speak in tongues, things like that. You surrender your life to the Holy Spirit. Let Him take over that, that situation. Allow Him to ask Him for special strength to go through and wisdom to go through. Ask the Holy Spirit. In the process of doing that, you may find that God may give you other things to make. You know, God may give you some charismatic gift as you as you go and minister, as you live life and things like that. And maybe God give you a special tongue to. So in the difficult time, you just burst into the tongue and just worship the Lord. And that becomes the way God empowers you to, 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 to handle difficult situations. And so the good thing, the, 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 the main thing here is, will you do something about this? You understand? And you know this is where the strength comes in. Will you, be, will you keep yourself doing what is good? Do you allow the Holy Spirit to do it in your life? So one of the good things we see is that, that you begin to act on something that you know it shouldn't exist in your life. Things like bad feeling against someone, grudges against somebody because of something it suddenly happened. Go and make peace. That is a good indication that you are allowed God to shape in you and make you a better person. Are you following me? Yes. And so you don't just sit here and listen, oh yeah, good. Act <laughs> on something perhaps God is speaking in your life right now that you want to shake, you want to move, you want to tear down so that you can shake. So we, may, may, may we just cry for a short moment that we need to come back to God. Ultimately God needs to speak to us personally, convict us. Maybe before we go on to the Nicene Creed as we proceed with the Holy Communion, that very quickly just, just, I just shut my mouth that we just quiet before the Lord and trusting the Holy Spirit to speak to us. Then that you may just respond in your own private way. Maybe you can pray, you can pray yourself to know the situation and things like that. Spirit, as we open our hearts and mind to you, come and interact with us. Come in the sense that you already indwell us, that within our spirit, God, you continue to speak to us. Come, Holy Spirit, strengthen our spirit so that we know how to respond to your truth. Act upon the thing that you have taught us in the scriptures. And so that indeed that we are being built into a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, offering sacrifices, spiritual sacrifices that is pleasing to you. So come Holy Spirit, touch the hearts of my brothers and sisters now. Give them the strength as if some of us might go through some tough times. Minister to us, Father, as we come in faith to you, through our Jesus, our living stone. May you, the living water, continue to flow out from our land. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come. Feed us. Satisfy. Why I 
us in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I'm now going to stand with we'll receive your service to the Holy Communion power. We will first now declare our faith together through the words of the Nicene Creed. And so this is actually a good summary of all that we have believed. Let's join together now the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and of earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one in being to the Father, to him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under torture of Pilate, suffered, died, and was dead. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures, sat into heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father. Come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic and the Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing. If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and He is the expiation of our sins. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all men. We now do the general confession that every Holy Communion we have a general confession so that you know we indeed uh, nothing will stop us, especially our sin, to coming to the to communion with God. But sometimes this prayer has become so frequently said that we lose the meaning. So may I suggest that as you go through this prayer, we do not rush to, but we will slowly pray through the prayer and and uh, may God allow us to really mean what we are saying to the prayer. Okay? So let us do rush to, but uh, meaningfully uh, pray together. Okay? Once you go. Mighty God, we have a Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought and word and deed. In the evil world we have done and in the good we have done. To ignorance, to weakness, to our own terrific fault, we are truly sorry and repent for all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgive all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins, comfort and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We now have the peace. We are the body of Christ in the one spirit. We all baptize into one body in the spiritual house. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's share peace with one another without touching, okay? Uh, this is you. So many times I'd like to pass an element. Thank you. Everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, 
and of how the own do we give you. We may stand it for the Eucharistic prayer. Eucharistic means the thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. For He is your living Word. Through Him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through Him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving Him to be born as man and to die upon the cross. And you raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on heart. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and make us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever, praising you and saying together, Holy, 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 Holy Lord. Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body, and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup give you thanks, he give it to them, saying, Drink this all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for men. For the forgiveness of sin, do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let's say together, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ Christ Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross, and proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. And as we look for his coming in glory, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect sacrifice. Join me together now. And accept to him our great high priest. These are sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink this holy gift, in the presence of the Divine Majesty, renew us by the Spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Him, with Him, and in Him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing, honor, glory, and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. We now join together in the prayer that the Lord Himself taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not give us in time of trouble, but deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. We humble ourselves, we pray together. We do now presume to come to ease your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather up and come to the table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, 
so to eat the flesh of the dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may ever more dwell in him and he in us. So my dear brothers and sisters, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Let us eat and drink in the remembrance that he died for us, and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Now, our kingdom will come and help me to distribute this prepared uh, element which is consecrated. And so then we will take one, and then we will take this when all our kingdoms uh, have, have a set of it. So if you are confirmed in the Anglican Church, you are welcome to receive it. If you are already baptized and you have been receiving uh, this uh, uh, Holy Communion, you are welcome to join us. And so again, a quick reminder that the two flips that you need to tear, the first one, the colorless one, the transparent one, is for the bread. So don't tear the silver first, alright? You can ready, tear the top one, then get the bread up. So once everybody is ready, then we will uh, we see this together. Uh, don't don't tear the, the bottom one, huh? Don't tear first. Because that one is for the juice. Or, uh, yeah. Christ has given us his life, broken body, and a shed blood. So now we want to respond by praying that we become the living sacrifice. As we mentioned just now, the power of this being to, to live on what God is doing is to be a living sacrifice. So let us all join together in this uh, dedication, Thanksgiving prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Today we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Set us out in the power of the Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Let not by faith receive the blessing from God. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and His Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and all your loved ones, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, my brothers and sisters, in Christ, who serve and love the Lord. Amen. 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 Please be seated for some announcement. Once again, thank you very much for joining us. And uh, uh, let's very quickly review some of the announcements you already should have in the bulletin and also this digital bulletin that you have received. Alright, the next Holy Communion to give you an advance notice is November 8th, actually the second Sunday of each month. We will have the step with you. So please take note. Then I want you to also Pray for the PCC, we will be meeting next Sunday at uh, 2.30. So one of the things that we will be discussing is to review a uh, whole uh, SOP and things like that in the light of this latest uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, situation. 
So we want to review our SOP and things like that, and the other uh, matter. So please continue to pray for us as we meet. Uh, get ourselves ready to meet next week. All right. This uh, this Wednesday, this Wednesday at 8 p.m. True Line will be hosting an online prayer gathering. So all you need to do is that you go into our big group that is a good COTN JB at 11. There's a big group. All right. So then we will on the conference uh, uh, video. So you just tap in and you can join the prayer meeting. And so we welcome you come to pray. And there are many things about us that we continue to come to the Lord. Okay. So remember that. And then uh, again, I uh, just want to uh, hide or kind of remind ourselves remind all of you, uh, if you are giving online, so make sure that you, uh, uh, make some, uh, uh, as you do the online transfer, uh, make some description about whether this is a tithing, that the giving is a tithe, uh, a, a, a loose offering, or is a thanksgiving or other specific uh, purposes. And so that when we do the uh, collecting and do the counting, then we know where to put the the, the giving, so that we have a proper accounting of all the different giving that we have receiving from you. And so we really appreciate your uh, cooperation. Just add in the description that this is a time, uh, this is a, a, a what specific uh, giving. So again, uh, thank you very much for your faithfulness in tithing, giving and other uh, as well. Alright, this is the second time. I just want to uh, announcement that this will be the final announcement regarding the Kinnachin Kony that he had been given three months of uh, leave because of his medical situation of the sleep death, uh, sleep disc. Uh, uh, so he should be on leave for three months. But then after three months, uh, uh, Bishop will be granting her a new assignment. All right? Uh, in, in, uh, uh, I mean, I mean uh, in the light of this uh, back pain, all right? So there will be a new assignment for her. So pray for her that she will continue uh, to serve the Lord uh, cheerfully. Okay, just a, a, a quick reminder, those who already signed up for this Bishop Farewell Dinner, remember, is this Thursday, 1510, all right, in the Truth Hotel. So please uh, be reminded. Don't forget about one week, one booklet. There's still a lot of booklet there, so please pick one and please give to, distribute to one person. Now, this is regarding the HSC uh, 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 services there. So, uh, those are online. And then uh, uh, those are from HSC. So I just want to remind all of us that in October, uh, there will be no online services and no physical services in HSC. So we are all encouraged to come here uh, in the mother church as it were, uh, to join the physical church or online through the line application. So I'm working towards uh, the goal of restart the church uh, physically or even online in the month of November when I expect uh, a, 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 what you call a staff or a, what you call a co-worker will be sent to us together with a seminarian who are posted here, posted here for uh, weekend, uh, uh, year end uh, practical training. So I'm working towards uh, me uh, latest by the middle of November to restart the church there uh, both in person and in online. So pray for us and we do all the necessary arrangements to get the HSC uh, back on the normal, uh, normal, what do you call that? The normal routine, in a way. <laughs> okay. Alright, now have you been receiving our Digital Sunday bulletin? Have you heard of this? Okay, so this bulletin is sent out to our link, WhatsApp link, the, the way we have sent out mass uh, announcement. If you have not received the link from this, uh, that means your, you are not in our list. So you want to be included in to receive all this uh, and send out, roll out different announcements and things like that. Make sure you have this number in your, uh, this is a church WhatsApp number in your contact list. And then give me a uh, uh, tell me and then you are now on this list so that I can add you into this. This is not a group, this is a mass the WhatsApp call is a podcast announcement. I mean, I just set up, you can reply. So when you reply, I am the one who will, look, will receive the, the, the reply. So the, the, the rest are, uh, no, so this is not good. So this for facilities to set up a mass uh, announcement. 
You can also receive this digital Sunday bulletin through this another WhatsApp, another app called the Holy Bible U version uh, application. All right, so you can uh, download this. Okay, then you actually uh, don't need the link. You download this. Let me. Uh, I think I got a little bit of time. Uh, so just hang on. Huh? I I want to show you. Uh, let's see. I hope this works. So I want to connect my handphone to so that I can see the slide. So what I'm doing now is show you the the how the plans you got. Some of you already got this. Uh, what you call this app? Uh, the U version app. So you, you might be using it to do your Bible reading. I actually encourage you to download this app because it got a lot of reading plan. Uh, uh, and then uh, uh, you can short term, long term, so that help you to uh, what you call it to maintain a connection with the Lord through the uh, devotion and readings like that. And then actually you can also share that as a group. You can do a group challenge that include invite different people to come as a group so that we can read and we can interact and what they are reading. Okay, so I got it connected. So now what I'm going to let you see is this what you call the new uh, uh, version, version. So you already download this new version. Then you find that in this uh, right bottom corner, you got the three three line here. So you tap it. Then you see this uh, event. So you tap the event. Then you will automatically you will find this digital bulletin down there. Right, this is a Chinese one, this is English one. So every morning before you come, you can go in there. As you read the Bible through this app, the after that you finish, you you you, you tap them. It's where you have all the, the digital uh, uh, the welcome and all this. All right. Then you have the the collab and the, the, the actually is the order of service. Then the Bible reading you actually can read from there. And then you have this uh, outline. Then you can make notes, and you see you can as you hear you can add your personal notes. So let's tap it. Then you can start uh, writing notes there. You can start like, writing your notes there. All right. So uh, as you go down, then you see uh, these different announcements and things like that. So maybe you know I encourage you to get this download. So uh, by most of the time, uh, Saturday morning or so, that this will be uploaded. So you can uh, and then have that bring that in. Even online, we sometimes I think can be very convenient. And so I hope that uh, you can uh, download this app. Okay? So, uh, okay, let's go back to the our uh, main slide. Now, maybe I want to mention something regarding, uh, I guess, uh, Friday, I think I saw most, uh, quite a bit of you uh, are online, uh, the live group. Some of you apparently have very good discussion and uh, very inspired to the meeting. But then also many of you are still here to join. So I really encourage you to be part of this group. Uh, now some of you find that you're already in the group, you are added in the group, but somehow you cannot add in, you cannot add in. Right? You, want to, you, you, you want to tap and then you couldn't get into the group. Maybe you need to down, uh, uh, uninstall it, download one, one more. Because in the process of downloading, I find that uh, because when you, when you start downloading the first time, they ask you a lot of questions. Can I, uh, do this, do this. Uh, if you say no, 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 that means you cannot, you cannot, you cannot use this uh, video. You must say yes. Then only you can. You find that you only can then use a the video to go into the group. And so I know some of it because of privacy, because of this thing, you do not want to say yes. But then the way you do it, you say no. Probably you cannot use the full full feature of the of the of the app. So I'm afraid you have to say yes, yes, yes. Then you will be able to go. All right. So go in there. So uh, if you have any problem, don't feel uh, don't feel hesitated uh, to to contact me. I don't do because I, I hope that most of you can be part of this online thing because this could be a long a long while before we can meet properly. Okay. So uh, I hope that will help. Okay. Finally, I want to thank all those who are serving today uh, uh, and uh, those who are serving next week. The list are there. So hope that you will take a look. And uh, you can't make it, please let me know. Okay, that will conclude our announcement today. Can we please stand? I want Kingdom and uh, 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 Shia to come and to sing the final praise. Okay, let's sing the final praise. Today's message about Jesus in our uh, Thomas Tomb. And this will be what we can sing about. This song may be new to many of us, but uh, it's a very easy song. Let's do it together. My hope is built on nothing. 
you have a foundation that will never be shaken. Even through our trials, tribulations, and the storm. Father, we know that we can depend on you. You've given us Jesus Christ to be our cornerstone that we can lean on. And we know this is a sure foundation that we can depend on throughout all the storms. We thank you. Praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us. We'll see you again next week.